We have seen how to do calculations of rise time, fall time, transition time, propagation delay. But that is for a small single transistor, single input a logic circuit like inverter. But when we build complex logic circuit, how do we analyze the performance or different behavior of logic circuit? So there are different models or analysis techniques uh, that are used uh, in uh, analyzing complex logic circuit. But one of them uh, is based on a method called a model called switch delay model. The other one will be equivalent inverter model. In each of these models, we have to calculate the equivalent on resistance of the transistor, individual transistor, or a group of transistors together. So we have to know the on resistance concept. And then there is another uh, technique or model that is uh, uh, widely used for initial calculation of uh, logic circuit. It's called Elmore delay model. Elmore delay model is actually an original RC circuit analysis or RC network analysis technique introduced in 1948 by uh, Mr. Elmore, a Japanese uh, uh, circuit designer, electrical engineer. He proposed this uh, technique to analyze performance of RC circuit network. And we will see that complex logic circuit can be represented as RC circuit, so we can use Helmore delay. Now the question is, what is the purpose of all these different analysis techniques using switch delay model, equivalent inverter model, or Helmore delay model? Because we want to identify, or determine what should be the implementation or design techniques or methods for complex logic gate. That same logic gate can be implemented in many different ways. Uh, the other purpose of this type of analysis is to help you as the designer. The size of the transistor you need to select to achieve some performance goal. And all these deci design decisions will be affected by some additional factors, input patterns, fan in and fan out. So we'll discuss one at a time. First, let us look at the on resistance concept. What is on resistance concept? Let's start with a simple, this is a two input NAND gate. This circuit, logic circuit, is a two input NAND gate. It is represented by two MOS transistor and two PMOS transistor. Each transistor can be represented, the equivalent circuit model of each transistor can be represented by a switch in series with the resistor. If the transistor is off, the switch is open, so it will, it will act like an open circuit path. If the transistor is on, switch will be closed, and then the whole transistor will be represented by this equivalent on resistance. So to, as we have seen in the previous lecture, propagation delay, rise time, fall time, all, all the timing parameters will be dependent, will be function of the capacitance effective at the node and the load capacity, the effective resistance when the transistor is on, making a high to low transition or a low to high transition. And also another thing we have to introduce now in this model is an internal load capacitance. Because this is a transistor. Uh, in last lecture, we discussed a little bit. Each of the transistor terminals have some parasitic capacitance associated with it. So every internal node, they will have some capacitance contributed from this transistor and this transistor. So this node will also have an effective capacitance in addition to output load capacitance. So now, as you can see, on the other hand, so in the NMOS side, there are two NMOS transistors. 
and there is an independent circuit node in, in between two series and MOS transistor. So in that independent circuit node, I have inserted an internal node capacitance which will be effected in this node. On the other hand, the both PMOS transistors are in parallel. They are connected together with the output node. And this transistor, the top of it is connected to the output node. So this output capacitance will be actually a result of capacitance contributed by this one, this one, this one, because they're all connected to the same node, plus the capacitance contributed by the output wire. So I don't need to put a separate internal node capacitance here. So what is the message? You need to put a capacitance in the equivalent circuit model of any logic circuit if the node is independent. Ground node, we don't put anything, it's a reference node. Supply node, we don't put any internal node capacitance within the supply. But in between supply and ground, every independent circuit node must have a capacitance associated with it. Those capacitance will be contributed by internal this capa device capacitance and wiring. So the total equivalent circuit model for these two input NAND gate is comprised of one, two, three, four resistance, four switches that represent four transistor and two capacitances. One is the output capacitance, the other one is the internal node capacitance for the NMOS network. So we have the total equivalent circuit model for the two input NAND gate. Now you can do it for any uh, circuit. So one of the homework problem or quiz problem would be, I will give you a random logic function. You have to implement that logic function. And the first task would be, draw the equivalent circuit model for that logic circuit you have just implemented. Every time you get an independent circuit node other than supply and ground, you have to put an internal node capacitance. Now, the on resistance is when each of these transistors is on, that is switch is closed, the total effective resistance across that transistor is called its on resistance. If the switch is open, it's open switch. There is no current, so there is no resistance, right? There is a resistance. It is ideally infinite resistance, open switch. But when the switch is closed, transistor is on, there will be an effective resistance across each transistor that is called on, on, on resistance. Now, the question is, how do we calculate the resistance to do the circuit analysis? Because we need to calculate RC time constant tau, R time C, to get the value of propagation delay, rise time, and fall time. For any given technology, for a given material, for the transistor, that on resistance is a technology parameter for a unit size resistance. Now the question is, now I have to define first what is the size of the transistor and what do you mean by unit size transistor. The size of the transistor is, the size of the transistor is W over L ratio. If W over L ratio is 2, that means its width is 2 times of the length. length. If it is 1, that means W and L, they are equal, and it is called unit size transistor. If W L ratio is equal to 1, it is called unit size transistor. If it is 3, it is called size 3. If it is 4, it is called size 4. If it is 0.5, it is called size half. Right? So, L is a constant for technology. If it is an 18 nanometer, L is constant, 18 nanometer. You as the designer, what will you select? Based on that, you select the size. If you select the same width, like the channel length, then it is called unit size transistor. For any technology generation, the resistance of a unit size transistor is a fixed quantity for a given technology generation, given material. And the symbol for unit size resistance are 
are n0 and rp0. Rn0 is the resistance of an on NMOS transistor with size equal to 1. RP0 is the resistance of an on PMOS transistor with size equal to 1. Now, yes, I have a question. Yes. Uh, I understand the size is unique. So, what's the W? What's the W is the width. This is L. Right? This is L, yes. This is the width. Uh, width of the device. Because that's the area of the gate, right? Width. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, now, we know that resistance R is proportional to width inversely proportional to length. So that means resistance R, resistance R for a transistor is linearly proportional to its size. Why? Wider the transistor, lower the resistance. Narrower the transistor, higher the resistance. Right? So, for a size 2 transistor, resistor will be less. I actually wrote it the other way. One over size. One over size, that means it's one over W over L. So, if the unit size resistance is R and not, so for any random and most transistor, for any random and most transistor, its resistance will be R and not divided by size because wider the transistor, larger the size, resistance will go down. So it appears in the denominator, right? So for any random transistor and MOS transistor, its own resistance of any size could be R and not divided by its size. For any random PMOS transistor of any size, its own resistance would be R P not divided by size. So you as as a designer, from the technology data sheet, you will get value of these two. And depending on your circuit needs, you are going to select what size you need. From that, you can calculate the on resistance for each of these transistors. Then, if you know the calculation, the capacitance value, now you can calculate RC time constant. And how to calculate RC time constant for complex logic circuit when more than one transistor are in parallel or more than one transistor are in series? We we'll talk about it. But let, let us quickly recap what we have learned in inverter. In inverter, we have this scenario, right? Input, output, VDD, ground. And my equivalent, its equivalent circuit would be VDD, right? CL, ground. So this is RP, this is RM, right? Its equivalent circuit model. There is no internal load capacitance because there is only one transistor here, one transistor here. There is only independent circuit now, there is this one. So here, when we did the calculation of rise time and fall time, T rise and T fall. Rise is 2.2 tau P, fall time is 2.2 tau N. Propagation delay, high to low is 0.69 tau n propagation delay low to high is 0.69 tau p. So what is tau n? Tau n is R n times C n, the R C time constant of this. Tau p is R p times C n, R C time constant of this. But in this case. 
When you have only one inverter, it's very simple to calculate tau. You just multiply xr times cl. But in this case, if both a and b are on, now we have a resistance in series with another resistance. But in between, there is a capacitance connected. So when we are going to, how we are going to calculate equivalent tau here? Because in this case, we have a, let's say, draw the, draw the circuit for that. What we have between output CL, we have C internal, when both transistors are on, this is what I have, right? RA of N, RE of N. Now, as I'm trying to make a hydrolo transition here, how do we calculate equivalent tau n for this complex logic circuit? So we are going to look into that in the next few slides. But for any of this analysis, whether you are doing for a single inverter or a complex circuit like this, very first thing you have to start with, you have to know what is the equivalent resistance. And how do you calculate the equivalent resistance? From the size you select, from this technology data, you calculate your resistance using this two formula. Yes. So the size we select. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, the size we select, and does uh, will it give us the resistance according to the size we are selecting and everything? Yeah. Because the size for the transistor you select, that will not only set the value of resistance, that will set the, set the value of many other parasitic effects, that is capacitance, and also that will also ultimately determine the propagation delay. Another question is, is uh, will you give us the, uh, the resistance number, or do we need to find out by This are not an RP not that value. For a, for a given question, yes, these two values will be given to you. And then, sometime, you have to do the back calculation. Here is the propagation delay target. You determine what is the size requirement for you. So you have to do the back calculation. Yeah. So, or, you will be given the sizes of the NMOS transistor and PMOS transistor. Using this formula, you have to calculate the resistance. And using that tau formula, you have to calculate the propagation delay, rise time, fall time. So also, the normally R, uh, RPO equal to 2 times of 3. Yeah, we so that is, that is, that is the, the nature of NMOS and PMOS transistor for the same unit size. Unit size means what? Length and width, they are equal to each other. W on L ratio, one. For a unit size and most transistor, resistance is lower than PMOS transistor. For a unit size PMOS resistance is two to three times larger than the unit size and most transistor because holes have lower mobility, electrons have higher mobility. So what we were talking about now, so here, what we have? We have a series of two, and two resistance, two capacitance. What if you are given to implement a four input NAND gate? How the circuit will look like? A four input NAND gate from the output capacitance, it will be one, two, three, four transistor, right? One, two, three, four. A, B, C, they are not drawing everything here. Four in the is NAND gate, right? So I am implementing Y equal A, B, C, D, NAND. For N NAND in the NMOS, they should appear in series. So in the PMOS, what will happen? They will have parallel. Right? So now, one, two, A, 
B to C, the, these are all PMOS. So now first thing is, we have to draw its internal, the, the equivalent circuit model. Equivalent circuit model will be, each one I'm not doing, replacing that. So you have to draw this one with resistance. a resistance with a switch, a resistance with a switch, with a switch, right? But now let's see how many independent circuit nodes this one has. All four of them are connected to the, this common output node. So this is only, this output node is only independent node that is connecting this transistor and this four, five transistor together with the output. It is a common circuit node. We don't consider ground as supplied as an independent circuit node, it's a source. However, there is one independent circuit node here, there is one independent circuit node here, there is another independent circuit node here. This, this side we don't consider because it is connected to ground. So my equivalent circuit model must have an internal node capacitance here, internal node capacitance here, internal node capacitance here. So in addition to output node, Capacitance, there will be three additional internal node capacitance on the series. So, one message is if they are in connected in parallel, you don't consider because they are all connected with the same pair of nodes. But if they are connected in series, whether it's in NMOS network or PMOS network, when they are connected in series, other than the top and the bottom, supply and the ground, anything in between in every series part it has to be considered as an independent circuit node. So every independent circuit node will have a capacitance. So now that we draw this circuit node, what is the, if all four transistors are on, if all four transistors are on, what is the scenario we are looking at? Sir, why we have not chosen the four transistors for the last? Because here... This one? Yeah. This is connected to ground. There also it is connected to the ground, right? No. We are taking this way. We are not taking any capacitance from bottom node of the transistor. Okay. Only one of this. Okay. Right? So now here what I have. So let's say this is my output node or input node or whatever. So now here as we in this case, as we move from ground all the way to output node, what the scenario I am having? I am having a circuit like this, an RC circuit like this, right? These are all ground connected capacitance. So this is my output node. So the last one is CL. I'm just looking at the equivalent circuit going from here to here when all four of them are on, right? So this is my C internal 1, C internal 2, C internal 3, right? 1, 2, and 3. This is RAN, RBN, RCN, RDN. This can be, in, if this MOS network we are talking about, this can be ground node, right? So when you have a single inverter, tau is R times C. When you have a single inverter, tau L is R times C because this capacitance is discharging through this resistance. So the tau calculation is very simple, Rn times Cl. But how do we calculate tau for this one? We this type of complex logic circuit. We need to calculate the resistance and the capacitance. The capacitance, the cumulative contribution in charging and discharging time. And that calculation technique, that model, is called El Mordile model for RC network. So he introduced his 1941 to calculate RC time constant for any general purpose RC circuit. Later, IC designer found out that well, it can be used for this type of complex logic circuit. So 
when he implemented this or he made introduced this technical formula, at that time IC industry didn't even exist. Mm. But we found out that that RC network analysis technique or timing constraint uh, calculation technique or Elmo delay model for multi-stage RC network can be used for this type of tau calculation for complex logic cycle. Yes. Uh, the lower most. Hmm? I would say, like, if I have to see the chain, yeah. then R1, R1. So, this, this side is the closest to the ground yeah. and the supply one. If the same series network, let's say, instead of four input NAND, if I ask you to do a four input NOR, right, then this thing will appear in the PMOS, right? So, this is where it is charging or discharging. The last node and the final node is your output node. But Elmore at that time, he didn't have this one. So he expressed that if I have a series of RC network, if I'm charging or discharging this network from this side, how do I calculate the timing constant? And it is actually very intuitive. You will see. First of all, what is an RC time constant? Mm -hmm. It is the time you need to charge or discharge a capacitance through a resistance. That product is the RC time constant. So RC time constant is the time or a measure of a time, it's not the, it's a proportional, measure of a time to charge a capacitance or discharge a capacitance through a resistor. In case of single capacitance, single resistance, we just multiply them. But in case of multi-stage RC network, we have to add contribution in the overall timing for each individual capacitance and resistance. We can do the calculation one capacitance at a time. We are charging and discharging it from this side. Just follow this. Whether charging and discharging C1, it is ground or supply is connected from this side. So C1 will be charged and discharged only through R1, right? So let, let us write its contribution to the time constant, R1, C1. The capacitance C2 is will charge B2 through R1 and R2. So its contribution to the timing will be R plus R2 times C2. Capacitance C3 will be charged and discharged through R1, R2, R3. So R1 plus R2 plus R3 times C3. The last one, C4 or CL, whichever we call, R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R3 C3. Now if I do like n number of segments, you will just keep adding term, right? There is one way of calculating the total time and so, the total equivalent timing constant for this four input NAND gate or this four segment RC circuit, because if all of them are on, four transistor in series, this is what we get. We are calling it internal load capacitance. This C123 will be internal load. This C4 will be load. Just for generalizing, we are writing it C1234, it can go up to C infinite. But as you can see, successively the term will be larger and larger. That means if you have a series connection of more transistor from 4 to 5, your timing or delay will not increase linearly. It will increase more than linearly because it is a factor of one multiplication, factor of two multiplication, factor of three, factor of four. If you have one more, it will be adding a term factor of five, right? So it will increase more than linearly. But forget about that. If you have multi-stage logic gate, where more than one transistor will appear in series, when they are on, all together in series path, how, this is the way to calculate RC time constant. Yes. So when a capacitor is being charged and discharged with a high frequency, it behaves as a short circuit, right? 
So I'm, I'm trying to figure out how we would do this with KCL. Because wouldn't we still end up with, with some amount of charge traveling over the capacitor? You are talking about high frequency effect. It is true. But at this point, we are only looking at the static behavior, the DC behavior okay. uh, part. When this actually, this formula, El Mordine formula, it, you can never be used because it is, in any general calculation, it will be off by 70%. So at this point, we are just trying to understand which factor determines which performance. Uh, but you are right, there are lots of additional parasitic frequency effect and also electromagnetic interference, electrostatic interference will come into play. So let us not uh, complicate that. <laughs> but Delay on the less on this side, then it will be more on this side. Okay. Yeah. Just since you ask, just to make you, because you will be given this type of formula, uh, this type of question. So if we draw this circuit, or input NOR, what will be the case? For NOR and OR, in, in case of NMOS, parallel, Right? This is my output. Here, from BDD, here they will appear. Right? These are all round. So, so your observation is right. In case of NAND gate, this side will be delay will be much longer than this side because here they are all in parallel between output and the VDD. We call it path length. Path length is determined by from supply or ground how many transistors you have to hop over to move to the output. Here you take any path, you maximum number of transistors you have to travel through, one. Here, one, two, three, four. Series path, no way. So this side of the delay will be much longer than this delay. In case of NAND gate. Here is opposite. Because here in here is to call series part of four here and we want to be good enough. Yes. So here the C series, why why there is there should be at least one capacitor, right? There is one, two, three. No, no, it's the parallel, sorry. Parallel, why do you put the capacitor? For all this side is connected to VD. Oh, got it. All these capacitors, because in any logic circuit, you are not inserting an external load capacitance. Load capacitance is the result of every capacitance that is connected to the output node. So the capacitance coming from this side, this side, this side, and this side, and this side, all is already included here. So let's say there is one para a parallel and there is another parallel of two. If you have that type of situation, let's say, now it's a good, another good question. So if you have like, if we, I think one of the problems we solved in the class last time, if we have like this, and then V out a D, A, B, C, like this, then this whole block parallel they will contribute one capacitance here. So here there will be a load capacitance, there will be an internal load capacitance here, which is the result of contribution of the top terminal of this one and bottom terminal of this one. So that's what I'm saying. Whenever you have an independent circuit node, whether in the PMOS or in the NMOS, there must be included an internal load capacitance. Okay. But in this case, these are all connected to the same node. There is no any, there is no separate independent node capacitance. Okay. So one more thing. Yes. When you are drawing this equivalent resistance for this four node, yeah. we have to consider only three resistors, right? No, we are considering four resistors. 
One, two, three, four. Oh, I did not just draw here. I, I'm assuming that you know exactly. Yeah, there is a four in here, here is the equivalent circle. So one, two, three, four. You have to add everything. Yeah, because this there is this last eternal load capacitance will be discharging through it's oh, it's four capacitance and four resistance. Four capacitance, four resistance. So so the number of capacitance and resistance will be exactly equal to the number of transistors or nodes. So as I say, so C1 times this one, C2 times this two, C3 times this three. C there is another way to calculate it. Some people find it easier. They, this one is goes by one capacitance at a time. Or you can go by one resistance at a time. You will get the same result. This, this one is now how many resistance we have? R1, right? R1 is charging and discharging C1, C2, C3, C4, right? Then we have the second resistance R2. It is charging, discharging C3, C4, right? Then we have R3. It is taking care of capacitance C3 and C4. And plus last resistance is only taking care of C4. This expression and this expression exactly the same. So you can go resistance by resistance from the beginning of the charging point to your destination, which is output. Or you can go by capacitance and cap one capacitance at a time. You have to just connect which resistance is charging or discharging which capacitance, or which capacitance is being charged and discharged through which resistance or which set of resistance. That way you can get the L1 time constant. Once you get the L1 time constant, which is the equivalent tau, then for propagation delay is 0.69, for transition time you multiply by 2.2. So you can get the, an idea of propagation delay and transition time for any complex body circuit. So that's the l mode delay model, utility of l mode delay model. So this is basically, we jumped ahead. The switch, this drawing of equivalent circuit for any logic circuit using resistance, capacitance, and internal node is called, this circuit model is called switch delay model. Every transistor is comprised of a switch and a delay element, a resistance. Every transistor is represented as a switch and a delay element. A finite resistance means it will take some time for the signal to pass through the resistance, the delay. It will, it will experience delay, that's why it is called a switch delay model. So this is the switch delay model for a two input NAND gate. This is the switch delay model of a simple inverter. This is the switch delay model for a NOR gate. As you can see, here both of them are in parallel in case of NOR, so I didn't put any internal load capacitance. But in the PMOS side, two PMOS transistors are in series. Two PMOS transistors in series, so we put an internal load capacitance here. In case of inverter, one transistor, one transistor, we did not put any internal load capacitance. And each transistor is represented by a switch and an equivalent on resistance, and that is called switch delay model for individual transistor and for any logic circuit. For our first step is to do the the overall the switch delay model equivalent circuit for the whole of circuit. Now, so as you can see, using the switch delay model, we have to do lots of calculation and more delay constant using this complex formula, right? And you have to carefully think about every single node where to put an internal load capacitance, where not to put an internal load capacitance. So if you miss one internal load capacitance, your calculation will be off by certain percentage. So, but that is more complex.
So if you want to quickly estimate the propagation delay or behavior of the logic circuit, there is a simpler and quicker model which ignores the impact of internal load capacities. But then, yes. I'm sorry, on that last slide real quick. Yeah. Uh, in this circuit, is R1 connected to the ground? Uh, no, this can be, if it is an MOS network, if it, yeah, then this MOS, ground. There will be ground. If it is a PMOS network, it will be BD. BD. Yeah. Right. Because in case of MOS network, we will be discharging okay. for high load transition. If we are talking about that NOR gate, then it will be VDD, we will be charging for low to transition. Okay, so in this case, R1 has the... Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it doesn't matter, this is this side is my source node. Right. It can be ground or it can be supply. Either I am discharging or charging. The formula for propagation delivery remains same in PMOS also, but they are in parallel, right? Registers are in parallel, so the formula... So this one, now, hmm. actually, if we explain the next model, this will be clear. But then now it's a good question. The question is, okay, for this complex four series transistor, we have calculated equivalent tau using this complex formula. And there is only way to discharge this output or make a high load transition, you have to turn on all four of them. So you, for high load transition, you will only have one, and only one tau n. But when they appear in parallel, you can have four different tau p in vector input pattern. So now, let's, since it works, let's talk about that, uh, that input pattern and how do we calculate Propagation delay for this given for input and the propagation delay. So we calculated using this Elmore delay model equivalent tau n. From for this four input, we are talking about that four input then we tau n we already know. So from this we can get T form which will be 2.2 tau n and propagation delay high to low will be 0.69 tau n. Now how do we, what will be the tau p? Now in this circuit, I have four inputs, A, B, C, and D. Only possibility for a high to low transition is, all four of them should be one, so that the entire series clock is on. If one of them is off, the circuit is disconnected from the ground, so it will not be oh. on to the ground. So for any so for high to low transition, and this should be in this should be satisfied only when A equal, B equal, C equal, D equal to one. But for any other combination, A You can write any combination, right? There can be 15 different combinations for a four variable problem, it's total 16. For one of them is on, and the series part for remaining 15 combinations of inputs, the, the series part will be off. But for any of these 15 combinations, one or more than one PMOS transistor will be on and it will connect output to the VDT. So now let's say randomly pick these two options. Right? Let's do a third option. For the first option, one A0, B, A1, B0, C0, C1, D0. So what will happen? The first option, with A1, 
this is power. B, zero. zero. This is on, this is off, this is on. So I have a scenario here for this one with BDD, one transistor, two transistor on, right? BM, D, connected to load capacitance, this side is open, right? So now, since one or more transistors are on between supply and the, so there will be a charging. So we are talking about TP, low to high, and rise time, right? So the question is now, how do we calculate tau? Here, the equivalent circuit will be resistance of Rb of PMOS, Rd of PMOS. There will be no internal load capacitance because these are all connected to CL. So this will be charging. So the first we have to do the calculation of equivalent on resistance. What will be the equivalent on resistance? Equivalent resistance is Rb parallel to Rd of P. We know that how to calculate series parallel resistance. Series means you add, parallel means 1 over R equivalent equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, right? So we have to calculate equivalent resistance for this one. Then once we calculate the equivalent resistance, then equivalent resistance of PMOS network, then tau will be R equivalent of P times CL. And this one will be 0.69 tau P. This is tau P we are talking about. This one will be 0.2 tau P. Now, you can do the next one. The next one. Next one is, all four of them are on. That means you will have four resistance in parallel. Then it will be four resistance in parallel, you have to calculate now. Now the last one, three of them are on, one of them will be off, so there will be three. Now I can do another one, one, only one of them is on. In that case, I don't have to calculate anything for this one, because there will be only one on, that is RP of D connected to CL, right? For this one, tau P is very simple. R P of D times C L. So, so, as you can see, depending on one, on two, on three, on four, on, you will get four different. Assuming that all four transistors are of equal size, so you have option of one, on two, on three, on four, on. So the T P low to high or rise time you will have four different values, right? For TP high to low, there is only one part, you get only one value. For TP low to high and high to low, and that is called the impact of input pattern on the performance. So, typically, we do the calculation for worst case scenario. What is the worst case scenario? The longest possible delay. Longest possible delay. In case, for this example, it is case by case basis. For this example, for high to low transition, there is no option, there is only one option. There is a my best case, there is my worst case. All four transistors must be on. But in case of here, low to high, you have four different options, assuming that all four transistors are equal size. How do we calculate, how do we identify what is the worst case? Anybody can? Anybody can say what should be the worst case delay scenario for this? No, that is the best case. Only one is on. It's like four pipes are pouring water into the tank 
versus 1 pi only 1. It's the charging part. So if four transistors simultaneously charge the output node, output node will be charged very quickly. The delay will be less. Is that why, or how you were saying with the model before where we had, um, uh, we had one, you know, like a, an arrangement in parallel and then one in series below it, if you had placed that single transistor above the four in series, it would perhaps uh, have, a, have a slower rise time because that one transistor has to charge all of those other transistors. Yes, you're absolutely right. Okay. Depending on where you are placing, if you have like multi-block situation, three in parallel and then one in series, then depending on how you are putting above or below, that depends on how many additional resistance and capacitance you are charging and discharging. So, but let us, at this point, there is called transistor ordering. In which order you put them, above or below, in the same series part. Let us forget about transistor ordering now, but in this parallel part of four transistor, if you charge them with four, the switching will be very faster because switching means charging and discharging. If you charge them with one, then it will be slower. Sla charge them with two little bit faster, three little bit faster and four charging. So now the question will not give you the input pattern. The question will be calculate high to low propagation delay and low to high propagation delay for the worst case scenario. So now, so you have to see which one gives you wrong. Let's say you have a complex logic circuit. You have a complex logic circuit. It has a one path in the pull down network with four transistors. It has another path in the pull down network with two transistors. This is V out. CL. This is pull down network I'm talking about. So if you are asked to first identify worst case scenario and then calculate the delay for the worst case scenario, which one would be the worst case scenario? Right. This one. Because best case would be all transistor on, it will be discharging through this part and this part. Worst case is one of the two will be on. But longer delay will be the one has more transistor in the series part. So worst case scenario would be A, B, C, let's say this, D, E, A, B, C equal one, D and D equal zero. That is the worst case scenario for this particular circuit. So when you implement the circuit with the smallest possible logic function, the next step would be, think about what are the nodes that will have internal load capacitance. So here, can you tell me what are the nodes that will have internal load capacitance? How many will be here? Three. One here, one here, one here. There will be only one here, right? So first thing is, in that equivalence logic that you have drawn, what are the nodes that will have equivalent to so internal load capacitance? And then identify the worst case scenario for series parallel path. And then you, for that input pattern, see which of the transistors are on. So now, if I ask you to calculate propagation delay for this circuit for worst case scenario, this is my input combination, right? So the equivalent Swiss delay model for calculating that delay, we don't have to draw this one because this guy will not come into picture because it is off for this. So then it will be F. Right? And then this is what we are talking about. One, two, three, A, B. C, D, there will be three internal load capacitance and then load capacitance. We apply L more delay model from here to here, we calculate 
tau n, that will be my worst case delay. Now the question is this equivalent inverter model. Let's say the our circuit design, all problem is very simplistic. We don't have to worry about internal load capacitors. If you want to quickly calculate the delay, there is a faster but less accurate method to uh, calculate the uh, delay. Or even in this parallel scenario, when four transistors are in parallel, if all four of them are on, how do we calculate equivalent resistance quickly? If you have more than one transistors are in parallel, it is like as if you are converting a complex logic circuit into one equivalent inverter with an equivalent MMOS resistance and equivalent PMOS resistance. That's called equivalent inverter concept. Let's say you have a two parallel transistor simultaneously in a connected, but the, if for this input pattern, A equals zero, B equals one, B is off, so its equivalent size will be the size of A only, right? If this is the input pattern, A equals one, B equals zero, this is off, right? So the parallel combination of two transistor for this input combination is equal to actually equivalent to transistor A only. So its equivalent size is the size of A. On the other hand, for A0 and B1, B will be on, so its equivalent size will be equal to size of the B. But if both of the transistors are on in parallel, equivalent size would be it just you are doubling the size because they are charging parallelly or discharging parallelly. So you are basically as if you are widening your road or widening your pipeline, right? So the size of the equivalent will be size one plus size two. So the message is if more than one transistors are on simultaneously in parallel, their equivalent size will be the summation of individual sizes. On the other hand, let's say for time being, we can ignore the internal load capacitors. If more than one transistor are on in series, let's say A is one, B e is one, so both of them are on. When you connect resistance in series, resistance increases. You have to add resistance. If two resistors, R1 and R2 are connected in series, R equivalent is equal to R1 plus R2. R1 is one of, R2 is one over size two. R equivalent is one over size equivalent. So, one over size equivalent equal to one over size one plus one over size two. So if more than one transistors are connected in series, and in between there is no internal load capacitance, you can convert them into one equivalent transistor by adding their reciprocals of size. Or in other way, one over size is length over W, right? So what we are getting here? If you have more than one transistors are on in parallel, you can add their individual sizes to get equivalent size. If more than one transistors are on and connected in series, you can calculate their reciprocal of size by adding individual reciprocal values of sizes. So L over W equivalent would be L over W1 plus L over W2 up to infinity. So if you know this technique, let's say if in a given problem, it is mentioned somewhere that internal load capacitance can be ignored. So if there is a capacitance, you cannot add them. You have to go by a more delay model. If there are four transistors in that example in PMOS network, an internal load capacitance can be ignored, 
Worst case is all four in the series has to must be on. If they are on, they are together in series. I add their L over Ws. From there, I get W over size equivalent. If I, why I need W over size equivalent? I already know R and not and R B not. From there, I want to calculate equivalent R. From the equivalent R, I just multiply it by CL, I get the tau. Without doing all those complex L more delay calculation. So equivalent inverted model is a very quick and faster way to get the equivalent size and resistance from a complex logic circuit when you have more than one transistor in parallel and more than one transistor in series. But it will be uh, significantly more error prone compared to the other model, even a more delay model is not accurate. So now let us look at this example we have shown using equivalent inverter concept. So we have introduced a logic circuit like this, so we are using that one. How to use equivalent inverter model. Okay. So let's say for a given LSA, the performance is input pattern dependent. First of all, let's say randomly given to you an input combination A1, B0, C0, T0. A1 means this is on. Right? B, C, D0, this is off, this is off, this is off. So this input combination, the first thing you have to understand, for a given input combination, am I getting a high to low transition or low to high transition? For this input combination, I am getting a low to high transition because it is connecting the output to the supply. Because with B, C, D0, we must transistor B, C, D will be on, we must transistor A will be off, on the NMOS side, BCD will be off, so it is disconnected from the ground. So for the given input combination, I am getting a low to high transition. So this is my circuit signal in cross means they're off. So in the PMOS side, what I have? I have from output to supply three transistors in series, BCD, and assuming that, I can ignore the internal load capacitors. So three transistors in series, so their L over W equivalent will be L over WB plus L over WC plus L over WT. Individual size you select or given to you, then you basically calculate equivalent L over W. From there you get equivalent WL. You already know what is RP naught, so you get the P equivalent for this input combination. So for TPH it will be 0.69 at the equivalent times. Here. Simple. We don't need to use a more delay model because internal load capacitance are ignored. Let's look at another example. A, B, C1, D0. It is a little bit more complex than this one. So A, B, C1, so this side is off, disconnected from B, D. D is zero, this is off, that's fine, this part is off. But A, B, C, all three are on, these are three on. But in this part, now there is a series parallel combination. How do we calculate equivalent resistance or equivalent size? First, concentrate on the this block. B and C, they are in parallel. So W over L of B and C equivalent will be B plus C. W over L of B plus W over C, right? From there, I can calculate L over W Q equivalent for the whole circuit. Why? Because this BC is in series with A. So the overall L over W equivalent for this whole and most side will be L over W for A plus equivalent L over W for BC. I have already know I already know what is equivalent W L over BC, one over it, L over W, right? So then if I know this one of equivalent, then I can flip it. I can WL equivalent for this whole animals. So R and Q will be equivalent resistance for this input pattern. For this animals level will be R and not divided by size. TPH will be 0.69. Right? So 
This is a faster and quicker way to calculate without doing all these complex Elmore delay calculation. Because in Elmore delay calculation, if you miss one resistance or one capacitance in that series equation, then your calculation will be wrong. You have to carefully look at every single input and output. Sorry, resistance and capacitance. So we'll start from here in the next class, uh, but because this is, uh, it will take some uh, more explanation. Uh, let's stop here today. Uh, I want you to please spend some time. I know there will be lots of questions. So, uh, lecture five is a short lecture. Let me double check. Because uh, we have to do a lots of problems on the in class. Uh, yeah, this is a very short lecture, so we will we will have some uh, class dedicated for solving problems from three, four, and five lecture three, four, and five because your majority of the design problem in a mid term will be from lecture three, four, and five. So if you can understand all the design details in this three lecture plus lecture two as well. MOSFET, as I said, you can design any complex logic segment. So, yes? I guess the example include like some of those conceptual problems that we've got in the quizzes and then like more, like another part of the test will be like So, at the beginning of the midterm, uh, the first part will be a simple conceptual question will be testing either to two faults or multiple charts whether you know the information or the concept, right? And then there will be questions on MOSFET behavior probably. I will ask you, I will give the equation for current and based on the current, I will ask simple questions like, based on this current model, what do you think? If you resist, if you increase the width, am I going to get faster speed or not, right? Those kind of things. Whether you can relate the design parameters with the performance. And then from lecture three, four, and five, this type of purely design problem. Okay. Don't forget your pens. Don't forget your pens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm.